potatoes can be served many different ways. They can be baked, they can be fried, they can be scalloped. But today we're talking about one of the most popular ways they're prepared. This episode is all about mashed potatoes. We'll head to Seattle to check out one of the world's finest restaurants, Canlis, and cook up an exquisite dish of our own. Tomas will meet up with the potato farmer, Nick Johnson, to see how he's helping conserve water. Then we're finding out what people in downtown Spokane think of instant mashed potatoes. I get the privilege to cook up some potatoes with the galloping gourmet himself, Graham Kerr. Then we're in the kitchen with our home chef, Kristen. Did you know mashed potatoes are America's number one side dish? Today we're in the kitchen using them in an unexpected way to make sweet rolls, the cranberry wreath. All this and much more on Washington Grown. Explosion of fragrance. Safety first, that's my first. motto. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Her bicep's bigger than mine. <laughs> When it comes to fine dining in Washington, one restaurant has topped the list for more than 60 years. Canlis was opened in 1950 by Peter Canlis. Fast forward 64 years and it's still family owned, ran by Peter's grandsons, Mark and Brian. Even after all these years, Canlis traditions remain the same. The wonderfully elegant food, the breathtaking view of Lake Union, and the fact that every single guest is treated like family. Since guests are the number one priority, the owners asked us not to record video in their dining area. But we talked to executive chef Jason Franey about the customer's experience. From the moment a guest walks in the door, it's a special experience. Tell me about that. It's like they're coming into their home. They see the faces that they know, they, you know, it's kind of like family to them, and we try to treat them like that. You're taken care of um, from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave. We have a saying here, we want to keep the promise. What that means is we want to keep the promise for the expectation of the guests coming here because they've been waiting for like six months, nine months, sometimes even longer than that for these reservations, and they come here and they expect it to be great. And although we can't see the dining area, we're getting to go where even the guests can't. Each night there are more than a dozen chefs bustling around serving only the best contemporary Northwest cuisine. I mean, it's crazy, I've never seen anything like this and I've been in a lot of kitchens. Yeah, very organized. To do fine dining you need to be super organized. The stuff that you do is so beautiful and intricate and, and artistic. Tell me about that. Well, before you eat with your mouth, you always eat with your eyes. And attention to detail is very important. Just respect the ingredient and put it on the plate. And beautiful stuff happens. And coming up on the show, Chef Jason will teach us how to make potato gnocchi the canless way. This episode is all about potatoes, and Tomas is in central Washington where it all begins at a potato farm. Just outside of Connell, potato farmer Nick Johnson is keeping the family tradition alive. He's a fourth generation farmer with a lot of pride in his farm, growing about 2,000 acres of potatoes each year. How many different varieties of potatoes are you growing, and, and what do we see here? Uh, this is a russet Burbank. They're used for pretty much everything. French fries, hash browns, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes. This year, we're growing 13 different varieties. Wow. It seems like everybody wants a little bit of everything, so that's what we try to provide. You come from a long line of farmers. So was there a point that you just said, I'm going to be a farmer? Yes. When was that? I think I was six or seven. Being with dad out in the field, I just knew it was something I wanted to do. My family's been doing it for 100 years, and that's important to me. What would it mean for you if your kids ended up coming back to the farm? Um, I'm hoping as they grow up on the farm and work here and realize the value of a hard day's work and being able to work with family, uh, how important that is. And it's something they'll choose to do, but if they decide to go elsewhere, if it makes them happy, then great. <laughs> 
In order to grow potatoes, the next generation of farmers will continue to need irrigation. So taking steps to conserve water now is important for the future. Tell me a little bit about the advances that you guys have done in terms of irrigating and watering these potatoes. We're using a third less water than we were even 15, 20 years ago. Um, part of that is through sprinkler technology, part of that is through our own irrigation planning, and, and part of that is just straight conservation. Where's all this water coming from? It's coming from the Columbia River. It starts up at Grand Coulee Dam and pumps up into Banks Lake and then through the irrigation project. And so this water has made the trip all through central Washington to get to here to water these potatoes. These sprinklers, they're a precision application that has really allowed us to conserve and reduce the amount of water that we use and, um, and still grow a, a high quality crop. To make sure the right amount of water is used, Nick utilizes a tool that measures how much water is in the soil. It takes moisture readings at one foot, two feet, and three feet, because that's what the root structure of the potato plant will reach down to, is three feet below the surface. Oh, wow. The company sends us the information on how much water we've applied, how much water is at each level, and then they have a calculation to determine and forecast how much water we need to apply over the next seven days. It's not just throwing seeds in the dirt, is it? No. <laughs> I wish it was that simple. <laughs> anyway, everybody would be doing yeah. it. <laughs> We took a drive over to a nearby WSU research station so Nick could show us the latest step in irrigation technology that allows for variable levels of water application. Based off of a field map that's done by GPS, you can water certain areas of the field more or less than others, and that's directly related to if that area of the field has a different soil type or uh, gotcha. just holds water better. Now once this sprinkler system starts coming over the road, a lot of these nozzles are just going to shut off because it knows that there's nothing there to water. Correct. It doesn't need to apply the water so it's not going to. We strive and we bend over backwards to make sure that we are stewards of the land, that we are conserving water and resources because we can't afford for that stuff to go away. We do it better than anywhere in the world here in Washington and, and continue to be the best we have to have this technology and utilize it to be as efficient as possible. It's about growing a quality product, it's about continuing a century old family legacy, and it's about growing safe food. We provide a safe food source for those in our country and around the world, and it's nice knowing that uh, we've done our part in that regard. To learn more about where potatoes are grown in Washington, check out our website at wagrown.com. We're here at River Park Square in Spokane, Washington. We're going to find out what people think about these instant Washington-grown mashed potatoes. All right, so I got a question. Do you like mashed potatoes? Of course I do. Okay, so how often would you say you have mashed potatoes? I'm going to say like three times a year. That's it? At least once a month. Uh, about three days a week. As much <laughs> as possible. It's good with every meal. Do you eat instant mashed potatoes? No, I do not. Oh, no, you got to get the real deal. Well, I can see your eyeball on these mashed yeah, potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you guys go ahead and take a cup there. Give them a try. Wow. That's okay. Yeah. Money, huh? Mm -hmm. Good mashed potatoes. These are Washington grown mashed potatoes, and they are instant. Really? That's just really good, actually. Well, they're from Washington, mm -hmm. of course, they're great. You think you'd try these? More often? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Something quick, you know, we got something busy quick, schedules. Five minutes to make some good mashed potatoes, tastes like homemade. Yeah, yeah. perfect. That's those are pretty good. Those are nice. <laughs> can I finish this? Yes, you can. Okay. That's yours. <laughs> you can take that tea. <laughs> cool. Coming up, we're getting the rare opportunity to step in the kitchen with the galloping gourmet, Graham Care. Very few people ever get in this kitchen. I want you to know. I that am you're so excited. You're the first person with say. whom I have ever filmed anything in this in kitchen. In your kitchen. We're back at the elegant restaurant Canlis, and as promised, Chef Jason Franey is going to show us how to make a dish Canlis style. We're talking about mashed potatoes and kind of a twist on that. What, what are we going to do? We're going to make a potato gnocchi. Potato gnocchi. So we have some Yukon Gold potatoes from Washington State. Awesome. Uh, it's a creamier, um, just drier potato. Love it. We throw them in the oven at 350 degrees for about a half hour. So we've got our baked 
potatoes. I work on peeling those potatoes while Chef Jason passes them through a tammy. You can also use a ricer. Okay. This gets all of the little lumps out of it. Mm -hmm. And you see the lumps are staying on that, that side. This is an arm workout. <laughs> yes. We peel and pass all of the potatoes, and then it's time for the big reveal. Oh, look at that! After scooping all of it from the tammy, we add flour, eggs, butter, salt, and Parmesan cheese, cutting them in and then folding them together. Oh, it smells so good. Once it's all mixed, we let the gnocchi dough rest for about an hour. We cut a chunk of dough, roll it into a log, cut little portions off, and then roll them into balls. The more uniform that you make them, uh -huh. the nicer your gnocchi's gonna turn out. Okay. Right? I thought it was doing pretty well until I got canned. Well, that's a big one. Take some out. Fired. I'm fired. I've already <laughs> been fired. <laughs> then take a gnocchi comb or fork and gently roll the ball down it. It's a technique, you know, you yeah. want to kind of roll it gently and then over, right? I think that one turned out okay. We put the gnocchi balls into boiling salt water, then we move on to make the glaze. Whisk together some salt water from the gnocchi pot and a little butter. Then scoop out the gnocchi balls and put them into the butter glaze. Then it's time to plate. Chef Jason pre-made a wild onion sauce and put the gnocchi balls on top. Then add raw shaved onion, pickled ramps, and black Australian truffles. So that's gonna add a little black contrast there. And then we're just gonna finish with extra virgin olive oil. And then you have it. You wanna yes. try? I, well, yeah. You have to have some with me. Dig in. Dig in. Yes. Mmm. Unbelievable. Good? Noki is so smooth for one thing. And people can do this at home. Yes. I love that. To see the full gnocchi recipe from Canlis, log on to our website at wagrown.com. Many Americans choose not to diet simply because they like to eat. And it makes sense. Food is a tremendous source of instant gratification especially when pleasure may be lacking in other areas of our lives. Food also serves as a conduit to connect with fellow human beings and our surroundings. If we were to step back in time about 100 years, we would find that the quest for adequate daily calories would consume a good portion of our day. And in some parts of the world, that's still true. The abundance of food that this country is currently enjoying is what people have been dreaming and pining for throughout human existence. With the growth of technology, we can now abundantly plant, grow, harvest, and store a variety of foods. We've finally reached a place in history where we can visit a grocery store and purchase a day, week, month, or year's supply of food without eons of time spent hunting or harvesting it. This may in part explain why we have increasing rates of obesity and diabetes, which the media reminds us of with messages about our consumption of sugar, fat, alcohol, chocolate, desserts, pastries, salad dressings, and so on. What all this points back to is moderation. And while we need to celebrate our advances in farming and technology, we also need to manage our daily food intake and stress levels in a way that our ancestors never could have dreamed. Stay tuned because we're cooking up some tasty mashed potatoes with legendary chef Graham Kerr. This is the legendary Graham Kerr, a pioneer of television food shows. He paved the way for other celebrity chefs like Emeril Lagasse, Rachel Ray, and Bobby Flay. He's best known for his television cooking show, The Galloping Gourmet, where he opened every episode by running onto the stage and jumping over a chair with a glass of wine in his hand. Graham now promotes healthy eating, and I'm lucky enough to hang out with him in where else but his kitchen. I get to cook. Yes. With Graham. And I'm That's so excited right. I am that we're here. To have you and in we're going to make some very healthy mashed yeah. potatoes, kind of reinventing yes. mashed potatoes. Yeah. Um, I think mashed potatoes is the sort of thing that uh, if you look back in your life and you think of grandma, 
then grandma's, in, in my case, very much so, a big pile of mashed potatoes. Butter. And, and butter, cream, <laughs> yes. um, or at least half and half. So we've taken away some of the risk out of the food that we used to do and hopefully make it better. Nice. Always nourish and delight. That's Love the that. idea. Nourish and delight. Graham says a typical serving of mashed potatoes is one potato per person. Even though potato doesn't have any fat, when you add in butter and some cream, you're looking at nine grams of saturated fat per serving, which may not seem like much. But when you take the 20 grams is supposed to be the max for a day, Ooh. it means what you're getting in one serving of mashed potatoes is almost 50%. And if you want cheese or butter or anything else, it's just, right. forget it. So we're going to change it. We're going to... Yes. Put it down to that. Instead of those two, I'm going to put in 1% milk mm -hmm. and just the same amount that I would have added the cream. Then we're clearing the way to start making those healthy mashed potatoes. And when it comes to picking the best potato out there... They are Washington and... potatoes. I yes. wouldn't dare use it other than the Washington potato. We like to hear I live that. here. I know, I know. <laughs> and we love that fact. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We cut the potatoes in quarters, add them to a pot, and fill it with cold water. Then sprinkle in a little salt, cover the pot, and bring it to a boil for about 20 minutes. Then it becomes um, the old potato mash okay. business, which does very quickly. We then move on to the mashed potato fixings. What I've got here looking at it is quite simple things to find. Grated ginger, red pepper, mm -hmm. and the garlic, and then the green onions at the end. Graham says the fat is replaced in healthy cooking by the taste, aroma, color, and texture of food, or as he calls it, the tact. T-A-C-T. Instead of R-U-L-E. <laughs> okay. All right, R-U-L-E's, you get people who go, I don't want that. Yeah. I prefer my butter and my cream. Right? But you say, I've got some taste, aroma, color, and texture for you. And there's just a chance you might win them. <laughs> We're going to add a teaspoon of olive oil to a pan, followed by all those healthy fixings, and saute them for a bit. It's gorgeous. Now, I want you to smell that. Mm. Okay. Smells. Now, what you would say, this is called bao xiang. Okay. Bao? Bao? Xiang. Xiang. Good. That's Bao wonderful. Xiang. That means explosion mm. of fragrance. And I've been in a 30,000 square foot area, mm -hmm. right? And people at the back of the audience are there can smell this after about two minutes. It smells so good, that's for sure. Add 1% milk to the potatoes and mix them together. Add your tact to the potato and milk mixture and fold it in. In this case, Graham is using a black bean patty as a base and adds those tasty mashed potatoes on top. You can take a forkful of that and you tell bet. me what you think. Okay, here we go. Okay. Mm. Mm. Taste, mm -hmm. aroma, aroma, color, color, and, and the texture. texture. Yep. I really like the texture. Good. Very good. <coughs> Love well. it. Thank you so much. Graham has an entirely different cooking philosophy than he did during his days on the Galloping Gourmet. He talks about his switch to healthy cooking in a special web extra. To watch it, log on to our website at wagrown.com. You know, when I was growing up, school lunches weren't all that bad. The pizza, the burgers, and who could forget the cheese zombie? But here, at Cheney Middle School in Eastern Washington, they're serving their students fresh fruits and vegetables with their program called Farms to Schools. Here, healthy is the name of the game. Let's go check it out. We decided to take out as many processed foods as we could and go back to a scratch cooking program. Probably 90% of our proteins come in raw and we cook them ourselves. Uh, fresh fruit and salad bars, uh, the whole nine yards. We kicked off Harvest of the Month this year and what Harvest of the Month is, we feature a specific farmer from the state of Washington with a specific produce item. So today, for instance, we're going to do purple mashed potatoes and it's from the Norman Nelson farm out in Skagit Valley. What do the teachers think of it? What are the parents saying about this incredible program? They're really excited about it. And the teachers are really using the, the educator packets that we give them and they implement that into their curriculum.
Uh, well, we're cutting them into small pieces and then we're going to steam them. So then we'll be taking them over to the mixer and mashing them. It's been an exciting adventure. Some of the kids are really excited about it, you know. Some of them wonder what we're going to serve today. So, what are you having? Tell me what you got on your plate. Um, I'm basically having a Thanksgiving dinner and um, a really good salad with some croutons and some ranch on it. Well, we've got our grapes, then we've got our cucumbers, and then we also got a sample of these purple potatoes. What are they like? Are they good? Yeah, they're really good. They taste exactly like regular potatoes. Very I've good. never had purple yeah. mashed potatoes before, so I was like, eh. I'll try them and then they're good. I like them. Have you ever had a purple potato before? Uh, no, I haven't. And what'd you think? Looks like Play-Doh. I think it's my turn to try some of these purple potatoes that all the kids are talking about. Let's try it out. Doing the farm to school is not a difficult thing. It's just about setting up partnerships with your local farmers and local growers. If schools start trying to do this, I think they'll start realizing it's not as expensive as they think. Purple potatoes! Like, yay! <laughs> if you want to learn more about this or other farm to school programs, just go to our website, wagrown.com. Well, who knew that mashed potatoes could end up in like a sweet roll type of thing and it could taste so good. It's gonna That's be delicious. That's what we're gonna do, right? Yes. What are we making? We are making a cranberry wreath. It's Lovely. a sweet roll that has tart cranberries inside uh -huh. and then the dough is full of mashed potatoes. Really? Yes, yeah, so it and makes a really soft, supple dough that then it stays soft longer. That's awesome, and mashed potatoes, as in today, we're gonna use instant, instant mashed potatoes. And these are Washington instant mashed potatoes, so it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna start out over here. Yes, and start by making our mashed potatoes for our dough. Okay, let's do it. To make our mashed potatoes, we add water, milk, instant Washington potato flakes, butter, and stir it all together with two eggs. Mashed potatoes, eggs, butter. It's all here. It's all there. And can you put mashed potatoes in other types of bread? You can use it in nearly any yeast bread. You have to fiddle with it yeast a little okay. and find the right amount to add. But the nice thing is that it makes your baked bread goods stay soft for the next day better. Nice. So, okay, I'll have to remember that. So you just have to kind of... Yeah, play with it a little. Yeah. You use it a little less flour when you add your mashed potatoes to it, but it always makes your dough a little softer and a little, a little awesome. yummier. Yeah. Okay. A little more nutritious, too. I love it. Win-win. For our dough, we combine flour, sugar, salt, some yeast, and our warm mashed potato mixture. So now we'll just mix it on medium for about four minutes. We want it to stick to the bottom, but not the sides. Okay, bottom, and not And then after sides. it's looking really smooth, we'll dump it out onto our floured okay. board. Okay. That looks so great here we go. dough. The mashed potatoes, America's number one side dish. Now in our sweet right rolls. Right in there, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're just gonna make him into a little circle. Meet him a couple times so he comes into a ball. I like how you call your food he. It's a he. It's a he. <laughs> That's very cute. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Anyway, just a rough little ball. And then we'll put him in this sprayed bowl and we'll let him rise till he's doubled. Now it's time to make the filling. We chop some cranberries, adding sugar and a little orange zest. Or I love the fact that we have mashed potatoes in our bread. I know, it's so, you you would never taste it and know, but it makes the bread stay fresh longer, and it's gonna make it, make it really feel how moist. soft it is. I know, oh my gosh. You can see, it's just such yeah. a soft dough. It's easy to work it smells with. Smells really good. So we're gonna pull them out. Okay. So how does your family like to eat mashed potatoes? I, you know, when we make them for dinner, we mm -hmm. usually just, um, I like them with skins. Do you like yours so with skins? I, yeah. So I yeah. about half peel mine. Yeah. And then we eat them with skins and... Nice. I always put garlic in. So we get garlic mashed potatoes. Yeah. We usually do that like on, around the holidays. Mm -hmm. We'll put the garlic and get some fun stuff in there. All right, now you get to spread on the cranberry as best okay. as you can to all edges. From... The whole thing. Oh my. So now that we have that done, we're gonna take the long way and fold it in about a third, like this. And then we're gonna take the other side and okay. fold it back over on top. Okay. 
Here's where it gets fun. We're gonna cut some strips of the dough. Okay. About a one inch strip. Okay. So we should get 12 out of this. Use your pizza cutter. Yes, it's so much easy. faster. Oh, look at that. Yeah, oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so you hold it here, and then you're gonna twist it. One, two, and then on the third time around, you bring them to the middle and pinch them. And then put How it over here. It is. And you can put them on our baking sheet. Oh my gosh, I love it. Aren't they beautiful? Yes. After covering and let our dough wreaths rise, we put them in the oven for 10 minutes until they're golden brown. So I can't believe that our little dough wreaths that we made now look like this. They look like the most they beautiful way I've ever eaten mashed potatoes. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Perfect for the holidays. They look so beautiful and they smell so delicious. And I, we're gonna finish them off with a little bit with of a little glaze. Lemon glaze. How gorgeous those are. Aren't they beautiful? It's, they're almost too good to eat. I know, can you feel how soft they are? They're so soft. That's the mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. Ready? Mm. They're so soft. It's pillowy. Mm -hmm. It's pillowy soft. That's a good description. I like them. Yeah. To get the recipe for Kristen's cranberry wreaths, visit our website at wagrone.com. Whether you like yours piled with sour cream and bacon, or maybe just a little butter will do, mashed potatoes are always a hit. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.